Welcome to session four of Learning Scratch with Fun. Hope you're enjoying your sessions. And in this session two, we are going to do a lot of interesting things. So let's begin. Here we are on scratch.mit.edu. Let's do some exciting things. So we go to create and this opens our editor window. But before that, let us see where are our programs stored. So if you recollect, we had done a couple of programs on the online scratch and this is my stuff folder. And what we are going to do is check how the programs have been saved. So we started with the first program, which was related to the movement of the sprites. So we thereafter had a square, a triangle, a circle, which was converted into modern art with the random block. And then we had seen the sprite sounds. After that, we did programs, but they were done on the offline version. And if you scroll a bit down, you'll see there are a lot more programs over here. So these are something which I've done in the past. So all the programs which you have created, all the projects actually get saved in my stuff. So that's like really good. So right now we go back to our untitled project, which is waiting for us. And we click on see inside. And in this, our aim will be to create a program to make the computer design a pattern using circles. So hope we remember the event, we pull that. And then we have the control with the repeat. So we take this and what we do is we repeat it 100 times. Now you remember how we make the circles. So we take another repeat and we feed it with 72. So that means 72 into five, which is actually 360 degrees, correct? And then we make it move by say five steps and then take a turn of say one degree. And that's all good enough but we'll add one more thing over here and that is outside this circle. So this is the circle program. Outside this, we are actually adding one more turn, which is 15 degrees. So we'll attach it and we'll hit the flag. Oh, oh it has gone out. So let's stop this. What we are going to do is we are going to make it go to zero, zero. So this actually will reposition our sprite to the center of the stage. And one more thing which we are going to do is point in direction 90. That means we are actually by default putting the things as balanced ones. And one more thing which we haven't done is use the pen option. So initially we have the erase all which we can keep over here. And then we have pen down. So right after moving to this position, we want pen down to be taken into consideration. Now let's hit the flag. It started, but it went off the grid. So it's doing something, but that's not what we exactly want. So we stop this. Uh, we change the degrees over here to five. And then let's see. Okay, now it seems to be drawing something good. So we hit the flag again. And we continue to see what this cat is trying to do. So as and when the circle is getting completed, it's taking another 15 degrees turn and then going with another circle. And our cat sprite is a bit more faster because we have added five steps in this instead of one step. So you can play around with the values and then you may see the different patterns emerging out of it. But right now it's a beautifully designed pattern which is appearing and this gives it the complete sense. So we can stop it now. I think we have given 
more number of repeats rather than what is exactly required by it. So we can stop it, but this makes us successful in this program. And what we do is we give it a name pattern. Maybe first pattern because we want to do more. So we have changed its name. So we have to click on save now. We save this. Hope you liked it. Now you can try it out on your systems as well. So since you must have tried it by now, let's go with another program. This time we'll do something unique. We won't take this cat sprite, but we will take a pencil. Now, if you see this pencil, it also does the same things which the cat sprite was doing. But the challenge is, if I want to make it write something, It writes from the middle. Hope you uh, can observe this. Let me annotate this as well. So the center is somewhere over here. Now that is something annoying because we want that the pencil should be writing from its tip rather than the center. So what we do is, as of now, we erase this entirely. We go to costumes and we make our pencil a bit small. Now, can you see there is a mark over here and that mark is with a plus symbol. And then there is one more mark, which is on the center of this drawing board. And that is actually the lock. So basically what we are going to do is we are going to shift. So as of now, I'll press control Z now we are going to shift our pencil to another location. So we select the arrow and we select the entire pencil and make this locking position shift to the tip of the pencil. Now, this is the point from where it will start writing. If you want to decrease the size, you can do that. Otherwise, as of now, for me, it's like fantastic. So I go back to my code and then I don't want all this. So I throw it into the palette. You go to event when clicked. And definitely I want to erase all the things which are there on the background, if at all. And then we do a pen up. Now, why we do a pen up? Because we want to go to the center of this stage. Now the center comes with X zero and Y also zero. And we are going to lock its position by point in direction. And then we are going to do a pen down. So once we do this, now we can have our control. So we take a control, we repeat it say 24 times. I'll tell you why 24. And then we take another repeat and we want to make squares now for making squares the repeat goes four times isn't it and then we go to move you're very much familiar with this we had taken a move of 100 oh sorry that was 90 and then uh, take a turn of say 90 degrees so that makes a square but along with this this is the program for making the square we are going to add one more turn over here and that is outside the square. So once the square is completed, the sprite needs to take a turn of 15 degrees. Now we feed this and we want to execute. So we hit the flag. Wow, what a quicker one. And we have our pattern complete. Now suppose if we change it to say 20 and we hit the flag. So it's going to make 20 squares and that actually makes our drawing incomplete. So if we have to complete it, if we take 26, oh, that's 226, sorry, this is 26. I am really happy with the speed, but it actually kind of overlaps the things. So 24 is the best fit. Perfect, isn't it? So this program can be called as 
pattern two because that's what we have done right now and then we save it it's auto saved so i need not even click on save now let's do something more there was uh, some challenge with uh, the online scratch so i've shifted to the offline version and let's do something further now and that is uh, going to have an aim to make a sprite fly hope you will enjoy this so we can write our program's name as flying sprite and the best sprite for that is going to be a bird for sure so suppose we search for parrot we get a nice beautiful colorful parrot and we don't want the cat to be around so let's delete it so this is our bird over here and if we look at the costumes so it has two costumes so one is with the wings flapped up and the other one is with the wings flapped down so that is something which we are going to achieve with the costume change so flap up and flap down okay great so let's move back to the coding section we start with when clicked and then we take a loop and this time we take a forever loop and in this we add motion to this sprite which is moved by 10 steps and then in looks we actually switch its costume so suppose we take it as switch costume to costume a or switch costume to parrot a and then we need to make it wait otherwise it will flap its wings so fast that we'll actually never realize the transition happening so i'm giving it 0 0.5 seconds of wait and then again i'm telling it that it needs to move forward so i've copied this and we go here so instead of a you can see the parrot has started moving forward but it's not flapping its wings down so we click on parrot p so now we can actually see that coming into action okay. great now the challenge is the parrot has actually moved out of the boundary so we need to bring it back and you know how it is done so what we do is we bring this block if on edge bounce uh oh our parrot is upside down and we know how to correct that as well so here we are so it's flapping its wings at the same time moving forward as well but this parrot looks really big so what we are going to do is decrease its size to 50. wow now this looks like a fantastic parrot which is flying on the stage so that was the program to make a flying sprite and hopefully we'll be converting this into a game later on and there are a few more things which you can actually do with your uh, sprites so let's work on a new part and that is uh, to have a change in the colors of this particular costume so for that i go to costume and then there are a lot of options like you must have used microsoft paint or tux paint or any other painting software so you can actually have these options which are similar to those the first part is you can actually select the picture and then it is actually a vector graphic so that means it's not going to pixelate so however zoom in you do it's never going to pixelate but with the scalar graphics the problem is that they pixelate so if we have to use non-pixelating uh, sprites best is to use the vector graphics otherwise if you convert it into a bitmap then you can see a lot of changes have happened so it gets pixelated and it does not look really good now the conversion is not possible so what we do is we add a new sprite so this goes off i'll take a new cat So you do have a flying cat as well up up and away okay great so we are there with another sprite which is actually not converted into bitmap so be careful while you are using this bitmap option yes it has its own good advantages but we really don't want the sprite to get pixelated on the screen now in case i want to remove its leg so i can do that so basically these all are clubbed pictures and then they give us perception of as if behaving as a single entity now if we want to change the color of this uh, cat so what we can do is we can select a portion and we can select color so 
Whoa, that's not good. So our cat has become all red. So this does not really look good. So we do undo two times and we are back to normal. Now, if at all I have to uh, do segregated uh, painting, so I can right click, no. I can ungroup, yes. So ungroup the cat and there you are. So suppose you would like to change its color. So see, as soon as you ungroup, you actually get a chance to change the color. So suppose you would like to have a blue cat now the second one you can see the color and you would like to have the blue cat so here we are with the blue cat again the next one so this way we add up uh, adding colors to all the portions which were actually orange earlier blue so instead of an orange cat we have a blue cat it looks pretty isn't it same thing can be applied to the second costume you need to select the entire of it and ungroup it before you start applying colors and then here we are so our cat is going all blue So here we are, the blue cat. So you can try out all the other options and see how you can do coloring. As of now, we are going to select it back and we are going to group the pieces together. Same applies to the first cat as well. So we are having a grouped cat now. So that looks good. Let's go to the last program of this session. And in this case, the aim is to make a chick sprite, produce sound, peck and run on the screen. That means uh, there are three tasks which this uh, sprite is supposed to carry. So first of all, we'll search a chick sprite. So here we go. We found it. The first one is good enough for us and we'll remove our cat sprite. So we have only one chick which is there on the screen right now. So we know what we have to do. We go to and click. And now, since we want to do these three tasks, what are we going to do is we are going to take forever and then make this entire program run in it. So the first part is we make the chick change its costume and we can select the costume. Now there are three costumes. So suppose we select the first costume and we feed it. Now we have something called sound as well. We will ask the sound block to play a sound for us. And if we see what is chick A, so it's uh, not opening the beak. Oh, oh, so this chick is opening the beak. So chick B is going to be the correct one. And chick C is the pecking uh, chick. OK, so we instead of A, take it as chick B. Now we'll wait for one second. Hopefully that is actually going to give us a good amount of time or we can even put it as 0.5 seconds. And then after that, we'll change the costume again to chick C. Now this time it is actually pecking. So while pecking, we will definitely want it to wait for a while. So once this costume is changed to chick C, which is the pecking chick, we'll again put a control and wait of 0.5 seconds. Again, we go to looks and we change costume to costume A. Now that is the upright chick uh, with its beak closed and it's not going to do anything. Now we go to control, we again put it as wait for 0.5 seconds and then uh, we make it glide on the screen. So that's actually going to help us out. So we'll use the glide option over here and this is glide. So say for 0.2 seconds and then let it be a random position. Now you can actually select it towards mouse pointer. Right now let it be random position. One more thing, very important. If on edge bounce and set rotation style to be left to right. So that's something which is going to help us. And by this time we know what does the if on edge block do and what 
the set rotation style block does. So to keep the chick upright and not to invert it once it bounces uh, on the boundary, we use these two blocks. So we are good to go. We hit the flag. So we can't hear the chirping sound. Let me stop it. I'll take off the mic. And let me increase the sound. It's already 100. Wow. So we can see the chick opening its beak. And at the same time, the sound is also getting produced. So lovely to see the chick come live on the screen. So that's our last program for this session. I'll stop it. And we save this project as chirping chick. Here comes the assignment part. Please see if you could do following. Repeat what we did in the session. Choose a sprite and make it change costumes. Draw the following shapes. Now the last one may be a bit typical, but you can try it out. Thanks for being here in this session. We'll meet again in the next one. Till then, happy learning.